So I guess I should start with two very small uh, disclaimers. The first is that, <clears throat> given the content of my talk, I'm not a mental health professional. Uh, and there are, um, and there are conditions, mental conditions, having to do with anxiety, which are quite serious, uh, can be kind of crippling, and are, should be addressed with medicine and therapy and all those sorts of things, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about are the sorts of anxiety that I think we're all probably pretty familiar with. Um, sorts of anxiety that we might feel before a job interview or uh, a date. Um, the feeling of uh, generally marked by raised blood pressure, fast respiration, uh, generally being an unpleasant person to be around. Um, <clears throat> I think those are things that are pretty universal that we can all say we've felt or maybe feel quite often. Um, and <clears throat> the question uh, to me is, uh, what is that feeling? So it's pretty clear from, this is not my personal research, but it seems to be pretty clear from uh, science, I guess, that that feeling for, for the vast majority of human history was a way to deal with situations that uh, threatened physical harm to your person, right? Like if you're a caveman out in the, in the plains and a lion approached, right? You would feel that feeling of anxiety and it would trigger a fight or flight response, right? Similarly, if there was a storm coming, you had to find shelter from the storm uh, and if you didn't, you might drown. That's the kind of it's the kind of feeling, that feeling developed as a way to help us, right? But now, we feel those feelings when we're sitting on a bus and we're late for work, right? There's no, tiger, there's no tigers in the bus, right? Nothing's gonna happen to us. Last night, before I came in here, I was actually, I mean, I was anxious, obviously, and I was literally, I literally spent three minutes thinking anxious about what to do with my hands when I'm speaking here today. <laughs> there's just no good place to put them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's going on here? Why do we feel? Why do we feel? Uh, why do we? Why do we feel anxiety um, in situations where we're clearly not going to come to harm? Uh, and the consensus from evolutionary psychologists is that it's a misunderstanding of our situation. Right? That our all these, all these, it's a relatively new thing for us that we're not living in a time when physical harm is imminent upon us. And so it's a, uh, we're misunderstanding our situation, right? And the way we know that we're probably misunderstanding the situation is because it doesn't help us, right? In almost every situation in which we have that feeling of anxiety, it hurts us. Uh, in sports, if you've ever played basketball, there's a well-known phenomenon called shorting a shot, which is where you start clanging shots off the front of the rim because you're, if you're tight from anxiety, right? It's terrible in professional settings. It's terrible in social settings. It's terrible in sexual settings, I've been told. <laughs> I would argue that there's really only one uh, aspect of our lives in which anxiety helps us, and that is when it comes to creativity. Uh, when it comes to creativity, I would say not only does it help us, but it's impossible to be creative without that feeling of anxiety. The enemy of creativity, I think, is uh, casualness, right? There's no, no great painting has ever been painted by someone who didn't feel anxious about it, feel a drive that he needed to do it. From my own personal experience, I started writing seriously about nine years ago, I remember the day I was reading a book, it was pretty schlocky, and I thought to myself, I could do better than this, but it was more than that. It was a feeling of anxiety, like, I have to do better than this. I know I can do better than this, and if I don't do better than this, then nobody's ever gonna know, and I'm not gonna know. So I started writing frantically. Parenthetically, I was wrong. I've gone back and read the things that I wrote when I was 22, and I wouldn't hire 22-year-old me to write a Chinese takeout menu. But <clears throat> the feeling, uh, 
the feeling of anxiety was what got me to first start writing. And it's also what made me continue to start writing for, for many years thereafter. And it's, oh, it takes all sorts of different forms. First, there's the, the, the worry about not going to get published. Every day, you're looking at the screen, reading a line, and you feel either one of two things. One is that this is, line is terrible, and it's never going to be good enough to be published. Or this line is so, so good, it's a shame that it's never going to be published, and nobody's ever going to get to read it. <laughs> and then when I finally did get published, I was worried that nobody would like the book. And then when people did seem to like the book, uh, I had to write another book, and that was really, really scary because I was terrified that I wasn't going to be able to write a book as good as the first one. <clears throat> and now I'm writing a third book, and uh, in addition to being terrified that I'm not going to be able to write something as good as the first two books I wrote, uh, <laughs> I also have, there's also a grand slew of anxieties, for instance, None of these rational. Things like, I'm worried that if I don't write this fast enough, somebody else is going to write a book with the same idea and it's going to come out before me. Right, I'm worried that I'm, when I read the news, I'm worried that there's going to be some kind of nuclear war which is going to hurt the publishing industry. <laughs> and that nobody, people won't have time to read and by the time I finish this, uh, or we're going to move on from books, right? People are going to stop reading, they're going to interact in, with 3D glasses or whatever, and it's not going to be a, a medium anymore. <clears throat> so it's only lately that I've realized that I'm not some, well, I mean, I was, I'm, not some, I'm not writing because I'm some sort of saint or like because I feel very strongly that I have some message that I have to give to the world. It's because I'm terrified, basically. And that's what pushes me out of bed every morning is a certain fear. And so <clears throat> I, would, I would say that um, the thing is that you can mitigate this anxiety. Obviously, anxiety is not a pleasant feeling. You don't really want to have this all the time. You can mitigate it healthy ways and unhealthy ways. Some of the healthy ways are, I have found, exercise and uh, having a day job, which isn't related to whatever creative passion you're pursuing, are pretty helpful. But at the end of the day, you can't really... Uh, push this anxiety to the side for one fundamental reason, which is that when it comes to creativity, anxiety is not a misread of your situation. It's actually a completely accurate read of, of, of our current state. Because <laughs> life is a life and death situation, right? And the struggle of creativity is to survive in sort of a higher sense of getting everything out of you before you die. There's a, the panic that has to do with creativity, I think, is uh, quite similar to the, being attacked by a tiger on the savanna. It's just happening on a, on a much sort of richer scale, but it's an accurate representation of, uh, of uh, the th threats facing us. Um, and so... <clears throat> I would say, see, now I'm getting anxious that I keep saying I would say. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's a never-ending cycle. <laughs> now I'm anxious that I said that, and now people notice it. If I had to sum up what I'm saying now, it's that in order to be a really great creator, as frightening it is, as it is to start a big pro creative project, the key to making that happen is to be even more scared of not doing it. That's all. Thanks.